What's going on YouTube? Uh, I'm sure you see by the video title, we have kind of a unique project going on today. Uh, we are removing the camshaft from a 2012 Boss Haas Cycles motorcycle uh, with an LS3. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with these bikes, they are kind of a hand-built, uh, almost custom motorcycle uh, by a bunch of guys down in Tennessee. Um, <clears throat> they build about 100 bikes a year, and this one's a 2012. Um, this one does have the 6.2 liter LS3, and uh, we're going to be swapping the camshaft out. Uh, pretty much the whole backstory with it is that it didn't run as great as it should have. Um, <clears throat> I tried using HP tuners to retune everything, and the factory computer was tuner locked. Um, we got in touch with the guys at Boss Haas, and they said that they used to use a different tuning company um, and had had some issues. So what we're doing is we're installing a new computer so I can retune it and changing the camshaft at the same time. It's not that the bike didn't have enough power. Um, it had a small comp cam in it. It was 208, 218 at 50 thousandths duration uh, with 541 valve lift on both sides on a 117 lobe separation angle. So it really wasn't that aggressive of a camshaft to begin with. And I think a lot of the choppy idle aggressive sound came from the fueling being off with uh, the tune. So this time we're going to make sure it's tuned absolutely properly and then uh, install enough camshaft that it will load. It, there's no doubt about this. Um, we're gonna be going with the stage four LS3 cam from Texas Speed that they call the F35. Uh, that cam is uh, much, much more aggressive. It's uh, 235, 248 duration at 50 thousandths, 645, I believe, intake lift, 615 exhaust lift on a 111 lobe separation. Much, much tighter lobe separation angle and is going to certainly uh, wake the bike up a bunch more. Um, the bike was around 485 horsepower before. Um, we should be well, well high 500s. Um, the last car I installed this cam in was around 543 horse at 7,100 RPM and a six liter. It was a L76 out of a Caprice cop car. Uh, so with more compression, bigger displacement, uh, we definitely are gonna gain a little bit more out of this one. So here's the bike. Like I said, it's a 2012 Boss Haas Cycles. If you're not familiar with them, go ahead and check them out online. Um, these guys do a really good job of building something that is pretty unique. Um, I believe V8 Choppers and Boss Haas Cycles are pretty much the only two real mainstream uh, motorcycle manufacturers that are doing the V8 thing. And I kind of believe that Boss Haas has the better package. Um, you know, it's huge. I mean, it, it really is. I mean, there's snowmobiles in the background. There's no other motorcycle sitting next to it as a comparison. It's around 1,200 pounds, and it is, uh, you know, physically a lot larger. I mean, it's an eight-gallon gas tank sitting on there that's saran wrap for protection. But it handles well. It rides well. It doesn't behave differently than any other, you know, big cruiser you may be on. So they really do have quite the nice package here. So tools for the project. First things first, you're going to need a number one Phillips head. Um, this will remove the plug wires from their holders on the side of the engine. Uh, you're going to need this special tool from Boss Haas. If you don't have this with your bike, um, definitely give them a call and, and get one on order before actually t trying to take this apart because this takes off the special hardware that holds your side panels on as well as the front radiator shroud, which we will have off. We got 8, 10, 13, and 14 millimeter sockets or 9 sixteenths, whichever. Um, those will just be used for random stuff on the engine. <clears throat> 10 millimeter, 7 sixteenths, half inch, and 9 sixteenths. Uh, obviously, I have ratchet wrenches here. They do help, especially the 10 and the 9 sixteenths. If you don't have them, you can get away without it, but the 9 sixteenths will use for the front fender bolts, and they're kind of a pain to access. And then the 10 millimeter is going to get used on one bolt on the front cover. Uh, <clears throat> random socket set, 
of Allen's and, and such. This Craftsman set's been pretty good. Uh, you're going to need a T40 Torx for the cam retaining plate, um, as well as a bunch of different standard and metric Allen wrenches for the engine. So I kind of prefer the sockets if you want to use T-handles or whatever. That works for you. Trusty Milwaukee half-inch impact, as well as the quarter-inch uh, for you know, just speeding the process and moving some hardware. You're definitely going to need the impact and a 24 millimeter socket for both the camshaft bolt as well as the crank bolt. And the 24 also fits the time, the harmonic balancer puller set, which we have here. This is just a cheap eBay unit I've had for a couple years, and it has worked great. The only flaw that I have with it is that this nut is also 24 millimeter. So if your socket slides off here all the way down onto this nut, you will go for a ride. Uh, because it now all of a sudden it wants to twist the puller and it makes a mess. Uh, and last but not least, we have these two 516s wooden dowels. Um, and you may wonder why you would have 516s wooden dowels cut to like. When we slide the cam out, we're not going to be pulling the heads on this. And although most of the time on an LS, you can get away with spinning the camshaft a couple times once the rocker arms are off and all the valve spring pressure is off, everything and the lifter trays will actually hold the lifters up in place. Uh, this is a 2012, it is not a brand new LS3. It's got less than 4,000 miles on it. So, you know, inside everything looks great, but the plastic has had a chance to fatigue on the... risk of the lifters not falling down inside the engine, we're going to slide the 516th dowels down the oil passages. Um, they do make special tools for this. Uh, they're like built aluminum. You can get them online for like $40. Uh, or you can go to your local hardware store and spend 79 cents on a 5 sixteenths wooden doll that's four foot long or five foot, whatever, cut it to length, and um, it works just the same. All right, so first things first, we're going to take the front fender off. Now, the fender brackets here, there's nothing that sets them at a specific height. So I guess I should have mentioned with the tools before. Um, grab a piece of masking tape, just set it on the fork here, right against the bottom of the bracket. Because when we take this off, as soon as we loosen the bolts up, this fender can slide up and down the fork tubes. So to make sure your fender stays the right height and your gap and everything stays the same, just mark that spot with some masking tape. And we're gonna take our 916 ratchet wrench and uh, we got two bolts, one All right, so once you get all your bolts out, or at least loose, like I said, you can see how this will move up and down on the actual fork tube itself. So it's good to have that tape on there to get your height set right when you go to reassemble it. And now that we got the brackets out of the way, um, you can kind of see here where the actual bracket was clamped on the fork. Um, you know, it's kind of one of those things, no matter how clean you keep everything uh, it's probably always still going to leave marks like this so if you don't have the tape or forget to do it or whatever it's usually not the end of the world but now that that's out of the way the fender will just pick straight up off the tire and come right out of place all right next up is getting front wheel actually out of place now the newer boss hosses have two calipers on both sides I believe some of the early bikes uh, don't. I think they only have one brake on the front. But I might be mistaken by that. Um, but regardless, the wheel is too wide to fit through there between the calipers. So we're going to have to remove at least one of them. Um, six millimeter Allen wrench. We'll uh, take the caliper bolts out. And now the caliper's out of the way. Now we can use a 3 8 Allen to uh, go ahead and remove the front axle. And now we got the front tire out of the way. Uh, you got to make sure you don't mix up your spacers. There is a small spacer on the throttle side of the bike, and what would be the clutch side of the bike if the bike had a clutch gets the wider spacer. And right back here is an Allen bolt with a 516 head on it. So definitely make sure you loosen that up and don't make the same mistake I just did when you go to remove it. Okay, now that I've bolted the caliber back in place just so it's not hanging by the lines, and like I got the axle back in there to keep the forks of everything nice and square. 
Uh, go ahead and remove the air filter now. Um, this whole setup here, the throttle body, it's, it's really kind of neat, and I'll, I'll make sure to show a little, this a little better as we get into this. How they've got it on here at a diagonal, so using the original mass airflow and everything. You just loosen that clamp up, and you can use a flathead if you'd like, but I don't know why anybody would. And uh, just kind of gently work this thing off from here, and out it comes. All right, next up, we'll get the big radiator shroud out of the way here. Um, now's the time you're going to need your special tool. As you can see, they are kind of a unique hourglass shape hardware. Uh, 7 16 wrench up there gets the nut behind this bolt and just twist it off. And now that the hardware is out of both sides, we get the forks recentered so you get more room. And just be very gentle and pull straight off. And I got to get this brake line out of the way here. And the shroud simply just comes off, exposing the radiator. Now that the shroud's out of the way, we got to get these upper radiator brackets. Uh, these things are pretty simple. They just, uh, one bolt here, it's through bolted, so I'm not going to be able to film that because I'm going to have to hold that nut. And these two tabs come off, and the radiator just simply sits in the little cradle on the bottom, which uh, makes it real nice and easy to get this thing out of here. And now that the upper radiator brackets are off, uh, go ahead and start disconnecting the radiator hoses. Now, I'm going to tell you this is probably the least fun part of this whole pro project. Um, there was not an easy, simple way to get the coolant to drain out of this thing without just sliding the radiator out of the way, and it kind of makes a mess. So I'm kind of glad I did this off camera. Um, go ahead and loosen both lower radiator clamps as well as the upper hose clamp, and then uh, you've got your transmission cooler lines going in the bottom down here um, and if you do lose any uh, oil in your transmission um, all it takes is uh, regular motor oil um, look that up in your boss house service manual um, we also have to get the fan ground unplugged as well as the connector that sits up in here and uh, pretty simple to get to just pep that, pop that tab up, and then it comes right apart. Now that our fan wiring is unhooked and our steam tube line is unhooked from the top of the radiator, um, now I'm going to lift the radiator and start working the whole thing to me. And uh, this will start sliding out of the bottom here. And then, uh, like I said, this this is one of the spots where it really would be good to have an extra set of hands if someone's helping you do this for the first time. And just be real gentle because you don't want to hurt this radiator. And it pops apart, and now the whole radiator is ready to lift up and come right out of there. Okay, now that the radiator's out of the way, um, next we'll do the throttle body. Um, you got to go ahead and unplug the throttle body right here. Um, this little gray clip pulls down, and then that gives you a chance to push the locking tab in and unplug that. Um, we also got to grab our 8 millimeter or 5 16 again and remove the mass airflow sensor. When you remove the mass airflow, it makes seems to make everything a lot easier if you remove the outer clamp first. Get that loosened up, and it gives you a lot more room to get the mass airflow slid out of here. Uh, once again, this works just like the throttle body did. Lift the gray locking tab and then push in the clip on the connector and then it comes right out. Um, when you go to remove the mass airflow, if you remove the rubber boot first, you have a hard time sneaking it up past all the webbing here in the head tube of the frame. So now you can go ahead and remove the inner one and just get that rubber boot out of the way so it gives you more access to the hardware when you go to remove the actual throttle body itself. So now that the throttle body is exposed, um, we can go ahead and remove the bolts that hold that on. Uh, there's one thing I wanted to bring up first before we did. I know a lot of people get nervous with wiring because you know they want to make sure everything goes in the correct spot. These two wires 
you can't mix them up. Even though the gray locking tab, all that stuff's the same. If you're nervous about wiring, don't be nervous about this because it's not something that could be messed up. So first thing we're first, we're gonna move this 10 millimeter bolt on the throttle body. Um, now this is what I was talking about earlier in the intro is what makes this throttle body setup kind of interesting. They're using just a stock LS3 intake manifold here. But to gain more clearance for everything, they rotated it on its side. So to do that, they come up with these little these little uh, spacers. Um, and the machine just perfectly to fit right on the side of the throttle body to actually help clamp that down. So you use two bolt holes, this one and the one in the top here, go right into the intake just like they normally would. But to get this thing clocked to the side where it would actually still seal, they have these little machined washers that actually, or spacers, that actually help uh, clamp that tight, which I think is kind of interesting and really kind of a neat idea. So now I got the two bolts out that actually bolt the throttle body onto the intake manifold. That lower one and that upper one. Um, our fourth bolt up here is the same clamp that's down here, but you don't even actually have to remove it. Um, it'll just kind of slide out from underneath it and the whole throttle body comes right off. Okay, so our next step here is going to be remove the actual serpentine belt. Um, to do this, you've got a little tensioner that is right there that threads like most automotive tensioners do. There's a lock nut on it. Loosen the jam nut up first and then it actually takes a uh, 530 seconds Allen wrench down in there which again we're just going to use a socket here and loosen this guy up. Back that guy off a little ways so we got plenty of room. And then here's where you're going to need your 14 millimeter or 9 sixteenths uh, to actually loosen the tensioner or the yeah, tensioner pulley itself. Once that guy's loosened up a little bit, you know, slide right down and your belt's loose and you can go ahead and slide it off and remove it. Um, now's a great time to do this because this job would not be that much fun if you had to put your radiator back in or once the radiator's back in place, have to remove it and do all that stuff again. Um, so go ahead and inspect it. Um, I'm sure everybody kind of already knows this, but just flip it inside out and kind of a tight radius, you know, and see if you got any cracks or chipping or anything in there and this belt's looking good. There's no frays or anything on it, so this one's in good shape. So now that the belt's out of the way, um, we're going to go ahead and remove what I actually find to be the most interesting part of this whole thing, which is the whole water neck assembly here. Um, this is, I think, what allows them to put this engine in here. I think this is the coolest setup in the world. <clears throat> um, two hoses here just bypass back and forth to allow, allow, allow water to feed through the block. Um, got a regular thermostat housing down here and it goes right into the electric water pump that feeds the radiator and circulates everything around. Um, this is uh, pretty compact. It's, uh, I mean, it sticks out way less than the harmonic balancer. And uh, I think that is uh, kind of the magic behind the whole thing here. So remove it, you're gonna go ahead and remove it pretty similar just to a regular LS water pump. Um, actually the bolts on the right side here, the left side of the bike, um, actually is still the same stock water pump bolts that you would have in a LS. Um, but then they've got shorter hardware over here on the our left side, and these use a 13 millimeter instead of the 10 millimeter like before. Now, because I've already had this apart, there is uh, no water pump gaskets in it. So, no need for everybody to freak out when you don't see any water pump gaskets when this comes apart. Um, I figured there was no point in uh, trying to dig the bent ones that came out of here, uh, out of the garbage. Um, and our new ones are not here yet with the cam kit. Uh, so now we got all those bolts loose. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the hose clamp. Get that guy out of the way. Um, and then go ahead and actually remove all of the hardware here. And then we get to snake this thing out of here, which really is not that bad. Um, you have to remove this clamp assembly off the end of this hose. Um, be careful, this braided hose is kind of starting to fray a little bit here. And 
getting stabbed by braided hose is pretty much the worst thing in the world. Uh, so now that that's removed, um, I'm going to go ahead and twist on here and lift. Um, the water pump is moving around a little bit more than normal. I already have that loose and I'll get to that in a little bit. But just twist and wiggle on this stuff and then it'll start coming apart. There, that pops off from there. And then the whole thing snakes out to the side with room to get the hose out between the head and the down tube on the frame. So there you go, there's that complete assembly. And you just toss the bolts back in it and set it on the bench. Now I'm gonna take a break from the front of the engine and uh, move to the valve covers and actually get the rocker arms out of here and so uh, The order you do this in really doesn't much matter. Um, I'm gonna take a break and go to here since I already got the socket out. This is the same 530 seconds that I had out just a few minutes ago for our uh, belt tensioner. And now I'm dropping hardware everywhere. Um, so go ahead and pull these two sockets out and go ahead and remove the chrome cover that actually covers the actual LS valve cover and exposes that. So now we're going to use just a regular 8 millimeter, just like any other LS cam swap or working on any other LS, just a standard valve cover. And go ahead and remove your uh, valve cover bolt. And just pick this guy up. And sneak it out from under our saran wrap there, and we'll go set this aside. Okay, so I went ahead and got the valve cover off the other side here. So now we're going to go ahead with a 8mm and remove all the rocker arm bolts. And uh, this being an LS3, has the blue valve springs that everybody from loves to use with the low lift cam, the LS6 springs. So these will be getting discarded for the bigger cam. And uh, of course the offset rocker arms because of the rectangle port heads. And then grab a hold of the tray down here in the center instead of pulling all the rockers individually. And apparently I got a bolt that's still in or two. And uh, grab the whole tray and lift it right off. Just saves from having to monkey with all eight of them or at a time. Um, I'm going to have them all apart anyways because we are going to be installing the upgraded trunnion bearings in here. And uh, I'll show that in the next segment once we get the cam and everything in. Okay, so the rockers, all that assembly is off both sides now. I'm going to go back to the front. We're going to go ahead and remove the harmonic balancer bolt. Um, again, a big impact is the best way to do that. If you do not have one, um, you usually can get away with it with a breaker bar. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes it's a little more difficult than others. So set that bolt aside. Um, some people do reuse them. They are technically a torque yield bolt, so you should replace it. And we will be, in this case, with the whole cam installation kit. So now get your puller assembly going. Um, kind of already pre-assembled this here. It's not really the easiest thing to do with, uh, with only one hand, but um, this guy, we need the longer of the three shafts, and uh, we're going to put that guy in there like that. Start tightening this thing down a little bit and take up some of the slack in here, and then I'm going to have to set the camera down and actually get this thing set up for real. Okay, so we've got it on there and tight. Now just start tightening that bolt down. And uh, slowly but surely here we'll get this guy right off. Alright, now we got the harmonic balancer out of the way. Uh, we'll go ahead and unplug the cam position sensor, which on an LS3 and all the Gen 4 motors and an LS2, which falls halfway between uh, there, here in the front. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start actually removing our bolts, which we can start with our two bottom ones here. Now, again, like I said, I have already loosened the water pump up. Um, I found that it is on a slotted bracket. And it makes life much easier if you have it loosened up. Um, just being able to move it to the side like I just did to get access to that bolt back there um, is a huge, huge uh, help. And then it is, like I said, down here on a slotted bracket. You can kind of see down here. 
and uh, so you can slide the whole assembly forward and that gives a lot more room to get this timing cover off from here. Move all of these bolts that we can get to with the impact. The problem comes when we have to remove this guy, which uh, you can get to, um, but they don't really give you a ton of room to get on everything. Um, and there's no way to getting this timing cover out because of the alternator bracket here actually sitting over top of it. Which leads me to this side. Uh, so we're going to have to loosen the alternator bracket. We don't actually have to remove the whole assembly, which is a good thing. Um, keeps from having to disconnect the wiring and stuff. But we do have to get it out of the way enough that we can get this cover off. So we got to remove the horn, which is one 8 millimeter bolt here. And then uh, the horn just kind of sits here in place, comes out. The ground wire for it attaches right to it. And then you got a positive wire down here on the bottom. Um, this is labeled. Initially, I was kind of nervous here about which one was which, but uh, it is actually labeled with a little plus down in there, so can't really mix up the polarity on it. So now that we got the horn out of the way, then we come in here and just loosen these two bolts. Um, take them out all the way if you wanted to but loosen them up about three-eighths of an inch or so seems to give plenty of room now to slide the whole alternator assembly out a little ways and that opens up that gap in there just enough that we can get this cover out now so now that all our hardware's out and our bracket is moved away as you can see now we got a little bit more access here um, we can get on the edge of this and remove the cover. Again, like I said, if you slide the water pump forward, it gives you a little bit more room to do this, or you can kind of slide the entire assembly out here, and it comes right out. Now, um, again, like I said, I've already had this apart. Uh, I had to pry that off initially. Uh, again, it's 2012. It has been on there for eight years now, or probably still nine, but it's early 2020. Um, but it is stuck on there, as well as on every LS, you have a little bit of RTV on these bottom corners where it meets the oil pan just to help seal. So that's going to help hold you up as well. So now we get to the oil pump assembly and the cam gear. Now, an LS3 has a cam tensioner. Um, most of Gen 4 motors do because of having variable valve timing on the newer ones. Obviously, this does not. Um, I have already gone ahead and put a drill bit in here and held the tensioner back. Um, that is not an easy job. Um, again, definitely a job to have a second set of hands for. Um, so now that the tensioner is held back, we can go ahead, we have enough slop in the cam chain that we can go ahead and remove the cam bolt and get the sprocket out of there. For the sprocket removal, once again, old trusty M18 fuel with the 24 millimeter socket. And Blast that guy out as well. Um, that is a torque yield bolt as well as the crank bolt. Um, the issue with an LS3 here is being a single bolt cam. Everything, all the force required to turn the camshaft is relied on just that little pin. And as you can see, it's only an eighth of an inch or so. Um, so when this goes back together, we're going to upgrade to the three bolt cam core. Um, that kit comes with the new GM sprocket that has the raised pads on here for the 4X uh, cam reluctor as well as the three new ARP bolts for the uh, sprocket itself. So now we can give this guy kind of a little wiggle here and we get a nice snug fit. But uh, Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. We're making ground. All right, there we go. So now that that is off, I want to get just a little bit of slop in this chain here and remove the gear. Um, like I said, this is kind of going to just be discarded into the LS parts pile that I've got stocked up here um, just because we really don't have any reason to use this again. You know, going to 3-bolt is the safer option and uh, is usually the one that's recommended with all the camshaft manufacturers. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention was now is a good time before you take this apart to put the engine at top dead center. 
Um, if you do not, this is not that much fun to see all the timing marks. Um, that is your mark on the cam gear. And I don't really have enough light, but the cam or the crank sprocket down here actually has a little dot on it as well. And those two get lined up. Um, you can use this notch on the top of the uh, oil pump to uh, you know, help align your timing. Just make sure you're in the ballpark. Um, again, this is not final assembly right now. We will be doing that in another video, but uh, it just makes your life a little bit easier when it comes to time to reassemble it if it's timed relatively close right now. Okay, guys, we're in the bottom of the ninth. We're almost done here. Um, next step is going to be use your T40 Torx and remove the bolts that actually held the cam retaining plate in. Um, on a Gen 4, these are t Torx. Gen 3 had regular um, 10 millimeter hex heads, um, and these are Loctited in here. So when you go to take yours apart initially, you may not be able to use an impact. You might actually have to break them loose by hand at first. Um, and just remember to re-Loctite these in place when they go back in. Um, when we get this out of here, we'll inspect the cam retaining plate. Um, a lot of times you get older high mileage motors, the o-ring here will actually go bad and uh, this one appears to be raised well enough that we are going to reuse it i don't see any damage in it um, a lot of time you'll see you know like the 200,000 mile junkyard motors a lot of these will have like squiggly lines in here where the whole lip is pushed right over and uh, then in that in that point you'd want to replace them they're cheap enough to just replace them if there's any question about if the gasket's good or not because uh these two holes are your oil passages to your lifters and as a great way to lose oil pressure if you uh, you know don't have a good seal on that so now is a good time to grab your cam bolt that we just removed um, and reinstall it back in the cam and that'll give you a good place to grab a hold of it to actually remove it um, usually you can get away with using a big long screwdriver or whatever to help lift the back of the cam as it's coming out but the way this bike is at an angle um, I, I tried it and everything with nothing to grab a hold of the actual camshaft, the whole cam it kept sliding back every time and it turned into a nightmare. So, before we go to remove this, we're going to want to come over and grab our 5 16 wooden dowels. Which, again, like I said, you may be wondering why we would use these in a motor like this, but they slide perfectly right in the oil passages here. Like so. Push that guy until it stops all the way at the back. And now, with the dowels in there, go ahead and turn the cam over a few times. That'll help hold your lifters all the way up. And then go ahead and start pulling this thing out. And again, spin this thing around as it's coming out. It'll help get all the lifters and stuff out of the way. And you might wonder why we leave the push rods in when we're doing this um, it just lets you know that your lifters are up it's kind of good reassurance you know if you start seeing stuff drop down um, there may be a the possibility that you might not catch it or something and uh, you know actually having visual confirmation seeing the push rod staying up is uh, it's uh, definitely a little reassuring when you go to do this and you're you know worried about the lifters actually dropping down And again, like I said before um, in the intro of the video with the wooden dowel thing, this works. It's not perfect. Ideally, you know, the trays are in good shape and it just holds the lifters up and everything's good. Um, and as you can see, you know, we are fighting lifters and stuff here. That's why I have to spin this thing so much to get this thing to come right out. Um, but it doesn't let them actually drop far enough that you have to worry about them dropping down into the base of the motor. And that's the most important thing. Um, because tearing an engine back apart or at least tearing an oil pan off and then having to remove cylinder heads and all that stuff uh, would be an absolute nightmare. I mean, in this bike, it's, you know, it's fortunately it's pretty easy because there's not really much below it uh, except for a skid plate and a point to lift the bike from. Um, but uh, it is, uh, you know, in, in a car with your whole K-frame and everything down there, especially in like a Corvette or something with a tight oil pan or 
F body Camaros. Um, they don't give you a lot of room to actually, you know, get the oil pan out easily in the car without having to drop the whole K frame and it could turn into a lot bigger job than you were initially hoping for. Okay, so now I do have the camshaft out. Um, kind of needed a second set of hands there, so I had to put the camera down for a minute. But uh, yeah, there's the cam out. Um, we ran the numbers on the back here that are ground into it. And uh, like I said earlier in the video, came up with the cam specs. Everything looks really good on it. Um, and I'm not really sure yet what we're gonna do with it. Uh, I think I have a friend who may wanna purchase it. But uh, that shows the teardown on camera shaft removal in an LS, but more specifically a Boss Haas motorcycle. Um, it's really not that bad of a job. Um, anybody that's mechanically inclined has worked on engines for a long time and stuff, this really is not uh, that big of an issue. It's, I mean, I understand there's a lot of people that are nervous with the LS stuff that are used to maybe an old small block and keeping lifters in it. I mean, sitting there looking at push rods in with no camshaft, it's probably very frightening to some people. Um, but it's not that bad of a job. Um, we have the seat and this side panel off here to actually help remove the computer, which is up under where the seat mounts. It's down here, so we can install the new computer. Um, but you don't even have to touch anything on the side of the bike uh, to do any of this. Um, we are uh, gonna have to remove the spark plug wires. Um, those will all come off. And then in the later segment, we will go through and actually pressurize the cylinders and use the valve spring removal tool and actually get the valve spring swapped. Um, again, I really, I said that number one Phillips head. Um, if you want to get the actual wires right out of your way, you just remove this screw and this screw and this plate here separates and lets you actually get the wires out. Um, might not be a bad time to put wires on it if it's something that you've never done and you've got higher mileage on your boss hoss. It would probably be a good idea, or just with age. Um, this one, we've already had put plug wires on it once. Um, we noticed some corrosion and just a little bit of burning from the, the actual exhaust itself, which is ceramic coated. It does a really good job of keeping the heat off from everything, but you know, and they do sit there on the exhaust, and unfortunately, that is a small block and a loss problem. Um, but there you have it. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed part one of the Boss Haas camshaft swap. Um, the next segment, once we get the camshaft and the springs, push rods, the cam install kit, and the trunnion bearing is all from Texas Speed, which hopefully they'll be here next week. Uh, we'll post a new video of the installation. And then I'd like to do a third video of the tuning process using HP tuners with this new computer and getting the bike dialed in appropriately. Um, I don't have a dyno. Um, I don't, it's not a very easy machine to data log on the street. And it's winter time here in upstate New York. So we are going to do the best job that we can with um, dialing the idle in and some of the part throttle you know, response as you're like moving around a parking lot, which is where this bike had most of its issues. And uh, I already fortunately have a tune that was used on a prior vehicle on the same camshaft. So we're gonna give that a shot and uh, see how it runs. Um, if we have to make finer adjustments later on, we will. Uh, this summer or whenever we get uh, good clear roads and good weather for motorcycle season again. But I hope everybody enjoyed. Um, like, let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you want me to change some different stuff up with the camera next time. i um, still using my phone, but I uh, may end up trying to use the whole GoPro thing so I can get like a head or chest mount going on and continue working with both hands at a later videos. So thanks, guys. Please remember to like and subscribe. That definitely helps out with producing more videos for the future. And uh, we'll see you guys next week with hopefully a new video for the installation process. Take care.